Hello everyone, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob and this is the 11th episode of my second Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy Series. In the last episode, I invaded the Frostlings and I'm about to capture uh, the first city that I'll be taking from them. I killed quite a few units, but they still got several armies around, so I'll be watching out for those. Uh, before we get too deep into this, let's go ahead and go over some of the comments from uh, last week's episode. Some good ones this week that I wanted to talk about. Uh, up first on the list that I have here is Arch Redbeard. Um, he had pointed out that I should be using terraformer spells to not only get rid of trees, um, but also spread salt, you know, bar spread barrens terrain around my cities. Um, which is something I can do without using casting points. There is one problem. I'm not sure that I can do it while in the process of casting a spell. Maybe. It looks like... And I think I did get Terraformer. Oh, maybe I can. No, it actually looks like I can without interrupting the casting of the dragon. So the interesting thing about this Terraformer spell is that it actually doesn't cost any mana at all. Um... I, I, I'm sorry, it doesn't cost any casting points. So you can see, it'll take down my mana, 718, now at 706. It's like uh, 12 per tile. But it will take down my mana overall, but it won't mess up my casting points. So I can just cast this all over the place and spend some of that extra mana that I'm not using on anything else. I'm going to focus on getting rid of things, tiles that slow me down. The forests in between this city and my uh, my other city out to the west. Um, get rid of the, some of these wetlands that I definitely don't need. And just kind of clear out some of the mana that I'm, I'm not using otherwise. Um, I could probably get it down a little bit more. Uh, maybe get rid of some of these other trees here. Um, some of the trees down here maybe in case I need to shortcut through this route. Uh, otherwise, that's probably good for now. I'm going to keep some mana on hand, but I need to try to remember to be doing this as I'm playing through the game. Oh yeah, get rid of these here, because uh, they're kind of in the way, and maybe those. And probably these. Okay, that's good for now. That is a lot of uh, barons that I'm going to be popping up, so... I didn't think to check my cities out here either, but they're already... Actually, you know what? I'll get rid of these wetlands. Okay, I'm down to 83 mana, so I'm going to stop before I get carried away here. I may have already gotten a little carried away. Might let my mana regenerate for a couple turns. But that looks pretty good. Um, that'll help out a lot, especially with my mobility getting through this area, I think. Um, that'll be really nice. Civ 5 Addict uh, wanted me to point out that uh, Draconian Elders, which I have down here. Actually, I'll just talk about that when I get into the next battle. Um... Civ 5 Addict also mentioned, though, in the last episode I was talking about my dragons with Path of Decay um, at gold rank maybe being a problem. Uh, come to think of it, if I'm using the dragons correctly, I shouldn't really be too worried about that because they should be in enemy territory um, a lot, not so much defending my own land. And uh, on top of that, the temperate uh, tropical climate spreading spell will probably make up for that and, and get rid of the blight almost as fast as they're spreading it, so... Um, I shouldn't really worry about that too much. Um, Dear Airship wanted me to check the range of the Spring of Life outside of this city here, uh, correctly pointing out that um, with the Enchanted Tree combined with the Spring of Life, it could make really good knights because the Spring of Life gets bonuses to cavalry. The Enchanting Tree gives bonuses to armored units. Uh, both of those together make for some awesome knights. In fact, I think I was able to get some of those produced in my very first advanced strategy series. Um, I did do the measurements. This is, it was 10 tiles away from the city. So just outside of the range, I think a couple, one or two tiles outside of the range. I know city borders can't reach 10 unless maybe if you're a warlord. I can't remember if it's nine or 10 if you're a warlord. Um, but yeah, can't reach that, unfortunately. If I'd have thought about that, I might have built the city in a slightly different spot to try to fidgeted in here somewhere where it could reach both that and the enchanting tree um, but uh, too late for that unfortunately uh, maybe I'll get lucky and there will be an enchanting tree out here somewhere but can't do that for now okay so let's go ahead and get into that 
you get into this here. I do still need to have a Frostlink City that I need to capture. Um, and I think I can only really attack this with one stack, the way these units are positioned. I could put a unit on the mountain tile there, I guess. Uh, but I don't really need to do that. This stack's out of... wait. No, there's a unit in there already, that's right. Um, so I could attack with the hero's army, which would probably be wise. Her or the dwarf. Uh, have them move in. I think I'm just going to have her move on to it. Uh, those units are still in pretty good shape. And then bring up uh, a couple pieces, maybe some backup from the dwarf army. The firstborn could use some healing, so I'll let him go along. And who else should I bring? Maybe another raptor? What am I up against? A couple white witches and a frost queen. He'd be a great match for this battle. Uh, maybe another Elder, so I can try something out. Alright, and then she has more than enough movement points to actually attack that city. Should be a pretty easy victory here. Especially since they don't have proper walls constructed. A Tufiket boss had suggested I turn up the movement speed. I actually forgot to do that before starting this episode, but I will try to remember to do that at the beginning of the next episode. I do leave it on like a slower speed because when I'm playing by myself, I, I kind of like to watch the animations and stuff. It's a neat looking game, but uh, for the purposes of this video series, I should probably speed that up. Okay, who should go charging in first? The Dwarf Firstborn, if he were at full health, I can give him a little bit of a buff here with my Theocrat, so let's let him be the one to do the charging. I'd really like him to get back to full health. Uh, okay, so this is what Civ 5 Addict was talking about. With the Draconian Elders, they can buff themselves. Dragon Ancestry will work on themselves. And when you combine the extra fire damage with the chance to inflict stun with fire bolts, if you can get three hits off on somebody, it will be an obscene amount of damage. So I'm going to use Dag Dragon Ancestry on him, and then over here I'm going to put it on the Flamer, and just kind of maybe see which one's more effective. Honestly, it's really, I think, in my opinion, situational. If units are going to bunch themselves up a lot, this would still be more effective. But if you're fighting units that are spread out or units that are closer to you um, so that they don't have the range penalty, this would be more effective. Alright, so they've moved themselves into a very nice position for me to hit all three of them. Oh, I need to be a little closer. Hit all three of them right there. So I'm going to do that for a bunch of damage. And then let's see what this guy can do. You can hit the uh, White Witch three times, the 15 or Ice Queen, with a 15% chance to stun. Um, I would really like to soften her up a bit. She's got that fire protection because of the White Witch's bonus or buff, which is annoying because all of my units do fire damage. It's going to be an issue when I fight the Dreadnought, but I think I can just overpower her with the sheer number of units that I'm going to have to shooting at her. Oh, I did get lucky. I got a stun. It was only a 15% chance, but I got it. Alright, may be able to stun or possibly kill that White Witch. Oh yeah, no stun her on the first hit, so the rest of those hits will absolutely wreck her. Yeah, let's get the Firstborns up into her face. Um, and I need to try to kill that on this turn, so the dwarf, which is currently exposed, doesn't take damage, if possible. Spirit Ray will still do plenty of damage, and I think that combined with this should finish her off. Okay. Alright, she's gonna move and take her... take the hit. Do a lot of damage to my raptors, which is kind of annoying. I need uh, her to level up. In fact, I think she did level up. Um, Although I don't know what level she is. Oh, she's only level 4, so I wouldn't have healing yet anyway. Alright, well I can't heal him. So, I'll just finish this unit off. Probably give the kill to my hero. There we go. The 
Raptor will heal fast enough. Okay, so I've taken Santa's first city, and it looks like this is the borders of a huge city, presumably as capital. Now, I am tempted to go up after the giant city. Here's where I have to make a decision. Do I bum rush him, taking the risk of leaving uh, my core cities vulnerable to a counterattack, or do I do this probably the more safe and slow way of methodically moving up here, taking out the city, and then moving into his territory? Um, I'm going to play this one safe. I'm going to go after this giant city, particularly before it starts producing giants. Um, because I don't know where his leader is yet anyway. If I knew where his leader was, I would go straight for the capital. I would try to kill him and go straight for the capital. But I don't know where he is yet. It's a good bet he's probably out there. But if I don't know for sure, I'm not going to take unnecessary risks. I also know there were some units down here somewhere, so it might be worth leaving a couple defenders in this city if I can get some over there. Uh, maybe maybe these guys would be a good choice for that. I can put uh, the tiger with them. Leave these ones where they're at. Ah, they just can't quite reach those berries. Tigers can, though. So all the tigers go running out here ahead of them these guys can come and kind of just hold ground to keep any light groups of units from taking the city. All right, there are items here, and this hero did level up, so I want to check on that. Um, projectile reflection, ooh. Ooh, that's a, that's a nice, that's a nice item. Uh, what does my dwarf have for a shield? He doesn't have anything. He could, the dwarf could probably use the shield more than her. So I'm going to move him onto that tile real quick here. Let him pick that up. Oops, and I want to make sure he gets his army back. I can move his whole army onto that tile. Okay. Yeah, I like that item on him. Um, lightning wand probably would be more useful on the elf if she doesn't already have it. I should have checked the other items before I moved her off of that space. Yeah, she's going to be more of a range damage dealer, so... What's the movement cost for here? Four, and here is four. So she can still catch up with her army. I'll just move her back and have her pick it up. There she is. Uh, these Tiger and Sandals of Speed... Those are, I find, to be really good on a Warlord, too. But uh, if he's got good armored boots, I might have him keep those. Oh, he's got the boots that give him forestry, and those have come in handy more than a few times. Anybody else? Uh, no, I like my king having the bringer of goodwill. I guess I could just send those to the Necromancer. I think that was the Necromancer. I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. And I'll let her have the shock bolts. Um, and I'll just give her Cure Disease. Why not? She is kind of a healer type unit after all. Alright. I actually could use some backup reinforcements for this army to replace the units that I lost. Oh good, a race governance level up. Okay, so this is the one where I was planning on getting this uh, Draconian Champion military upgrade. I've actually already talked about that a lot, so if you want to see more about that, you might watch a few episodes ago where I was talking about the decision between these two. But I am going to go with the cheaper support units because it does benefit both gold costs and production. It helps me make units faster. Santa sent me a message. He is just threatening me, so... Okay, so this was an important event from the last episode. We noticed these two went to war with each other, which is good for me because it means I probably don't have to worry too much about my border right now. If Jazargo is forcing his army west instead of south, I might be in better shape there. It might give me time to finish off Santa and shore up my defenses in case Jazargo tries anything. All right, cities are growing. This was a good one. Look at all that extra money. I mean, that's just huge. I need to clear this. Um, I'll have to get some boats out there as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, this city is, this is a really nice, going to be a really nice income producing city. Uh, this army is going to be clearing that structure on this turn. Hopefully, uh, those wisps are not to be underestimated. 
but uh, I'm gonna have to give it a shot. She did get a new item, so I'll go ahead and equip those before doing this battle. And I'll go ahead and, and just take this out now. These wisps, wisps just, just scare me in general. It says closely matched too. You know what, this guy's pretty beat up. I'm gonna give him uh, another turn of healing with that fast regeneration. Just uh, slow down here and take it easy on him. Because the wisps could all gang up on him and kill him and I don't really want to lose another raptor right now. Okay, she just leveled up to the point where she can get sacred arms, which is great, uh, especially for melee units. Um, so I'll try to make sure she's got a couple, maybe two raptors with her, which would really diversify their damage nicely. Um, I also may have considered getting Chaplain to help with the snow, the dislike for Arctic, but I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal if I keep winning battles. My units will be plenty happy. Uh, and for the other one, I'm just going to save those two points and see if maybe there's something better I can get. Um, actually, I do like to get the extra resistance. I don't know. I'm going to hang on to those for now and, and see what I can get at the next level. All right, city awaits its fate. Well, I know I'm not keeping this as Frostlings, that's for sure. I don't have a whole lot of use for Frostlings as the Draconians, because um, we're not gonna get along in terms of terrain very easily. Although I could cast spells that make them happier in my terrain, I think it'd be easier to just turn these cities over to my control. Um, in this one, I could make, well, a magic library for decent support units, a couple structures out here. Um, this would actually be a really good boat-making city, now that I think of it, um, because it's got the quarry right here, and it's right on the coast, uh, which is kind of why I built this city where it was, but this one's got a lot more easy access to the ocean. I think I'm going to turn it into humans, because I could also use the magic library to make decent human priests. I like that idea. Migrate to humans it is. And that helps me become more evil, which is good. All right, uh, next up on my research list. Sorcery was kind of the route I was going to try to get some something divisible of those drag. Oh, no, wait, I was going to try to get 80 casting points because the Phantasm Warriors cost 80. I am tempted to get Greater Disjunction now, but that's really going to be more useful later in the game, I think. Um, you don't want to wait too long to get it, but for now, I'm just going to keep stacking on some more casting points. Especially since I have so much mana to spend. Alright, Builder's Hall is done. Uh, what next here? Thinking growth. Um, I'm thinking it's actually not going to matter a whole lot because the city's borders are going to conflict with the one out here, which is just annoying. Um... But let's go ahead and do, let's just do, because I get extra bonuses from laboratories and observatories, I'll go that route. Uh, King's Army right here. I'm going to go ahead and clear, probably clear this, because I would hope the city would be growing pretty soon. Yeah, four turns, so I'll want that extra research. I almost don't really even need to do these anymore. I'm going to go ahead and auto combat that. Yeah. I do need to remember to turn off cast spells in auto combat. I got the spell out of that too. And what next? For my king's army. Oh yeah, I wanted to go clear that dungeon. I was considering, oh yeah, that's right. I was considering attacking Jazargo with this army. Still not sure about that. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Back in my capital, continuing working towards that, uh, that palace that I've been trying to get for a while now. I think the Master's Guild was next on my list. Which is going to take most of my spending money this turn. And I remember she was joining this army. Um, I don't recall... Gosh, what was I doing with them? Ha! <laughs> It's easy, it's amazing how much you can lose track when you get off the game and then get back on a couple days later. Um, I believe I was kind of bringing them up north to sort of help bolster my king's army as he prepares to move on to Jasargo's territory, if that's what I end up doing. Um, 
And I think I'm going to stick with that plan. There's not a whole lot else they can do out here other than help this army push underground. Which is actually something that... I'm going to send a couple kind of lousy units off because this army's only got four units in it. I'll send them off to go help them. And then the rest of you can go up here and gather together with these units. This might be more of an army I use as kind of like a general defense and maybe reinforcements for my front line. Um, simply because I don't... Well, I don't know. I could probably start sending them towards the front line with the Draconians and maybe split up into two stacks of six at different points. I'll kind of figure that out once I see what he's got over there a little bit more. Um, back over here in Gramzar. Probably just merchandise on this turn. I don't have a whole lot of money to do a whole lot else with it. So I'll save it for now. And then over here, I could make another Raptor. Uh, but I'm not going to. I think I have enough military units for the time being. And I'm going to start focusing a little bit more on, while I have this period of time trying to upgrade my infrastructure to get all those really nice buildings in my cities. I think my army's big enough for the time being. Right, let's explore a little bit more. Oh, I met somebody. Leave me alone and I might just spare your life. Well, that's not very nice. Um, what's oh, actually what I should do is check the diplomacy menu and see who else she has met. She is a High Elf Warlord. And... I guess it's Declaration of War. Oh, see, she has met Santa. So I could ask for her to help with the war with Santa. I'm actually not going to. Um, I'm actually not going to because... I don't want her rushing in and taking any of Santa's stuff. I want it all for myself. So I'm going to just kind of ignore her for now. Worry about her later. Now there's the borders for one of her cities. All right. Um, since these guys are going to come up from behind, maybe I'll have these armies wait for one more turn. Might be something good I can buy in here. Still a lot of works. Continue on its path. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to stay there. <laughs> These titans are trying to chase those wisps down. I'll grab that mana because it's there. And anytime I see haste berries, I use up as much movement as I can. I'm um, just exploring. That's going to be six. Well, it says base move cost, I think, for a floating unit. It's less. Yeah. All right, go back and grab the haste berries and continue along the lava river path just to see where this goes. All right, everybody, and then these guys are all pretty well bunched up for now. I'm just gonna let them stay where they are. The builder was on its way to build a road going out in this direction, so I'm going to start putting a road there. All right. Just cut right through. Okay, looks good. Overall, I think my position with Santa's looking pretty good right now, regardless of what I do. If he had more units, I mean, he does have more units, I know he does, but I would think he would have mounted a larger defense or tried to do something with them when this army attacked, which makes me think he's spread a little bit thin right now. I'm hoping that Dreadnought army is up here and then I can just run up and wreck him and then run into the rest of his land fairly undefended. Of course, computers do seem to prioritize defending their capital a little higher than their other cities, so I may still have some fighting to do over there. I just really wish I knew where his leader was. That would be nice. Maybe one of you guys can spot him, like what happened with the uh, with the orc. Quest available for this city. Uh, tell me more about it. What is that? Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's a nice item. 
I have to kill some giants though, but I think I've got enough units to do that. Can I click on the giants and see how many there are? Oh, it's just one giant and a bunch of lousy units. Uh, yeah, and I get a flyer out of that. That's a really nice quest pop-up. I'll take that. That gives something for um, this army to do, or maybe even my king's army. I think these guys might be able to handle it, although it is a fire giant, so it's going to be a little more resistant to my damage. Um, I'm going to want support units to try to stun that thing. And I don't think I have any with this group, so I'm going to pop out another elder, but that city's busy building. I think all my elders are at the front line. Um, that might be a job for my king's army, I think. Just because... They're, they're kind of far away, though. That's, that's the issue here. I could send the white witch out to kind of help. She would do a little bit more damage to it. Um, I could always send the dragon out to help them, too. That would pretty much solve the problem right there. Well, let's go ahead and uh, clear the dungeon, and then I might send the dragon back. Hopefully I'll get something good in here. There's a Manticore Rider in here, so we get some good Tier 4 versus Tier 4 action, hopefully. Uh, what type of Manticore Rider is it? A Tigran, so they're going to have Pounce. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Pounce is almost like Defensive Strike with extra range. Maybe a little less damage, I'm not sure. Okay. Fighting him in this open arena should be fine. Alright, go forward. Holy, go forth. I'm recording this on the 50th, 50th anniversary of Star Trek, by the way. Just throwing that out there. It's an exciting day for people like me. Okay. That's probably fine. I kind of messed up moving him forward. I was going to be a little more careful, but we'll see if they take the bait. I don't think I can hit him with any other units from here, and he can fly pretty well over me, so I have to kind of keep that in mind as a possibility. Um, but I've got three fairly tough units up front. Well, make it two. I don't really want my king taking a hit that he doesn't have to take. Longbows look good where they are. Uh, actually, I'll move them around. Keep them on the opposite side from my witch and my king. That looks okay. We'll see what they do. I, he is not going to be lured out. Well, that's going to make this a little bit of an issue. Okay, it's round four, so I've got two turns to figure this out. Um... There's got to be a way I can get my archers into a position where I can guard them with my other units. Or my king. Or anybody, really. Actually, you know what? I don't have to hit the Manticore Rider. That's the thing that worries me. It's got pounce, so it's still going to be an issue regardless of where I put my units. But I don't have to hit the Manticore Rider. I could go after the Tiger and lure them this way. I think that's probably the safer idea. I'd prefer to him not to get a pouncing flank attack on a unit with its guard down. That would be unfortunate and would do a lot of damage. Maybe if I just get really uncomfortably close to this tiger, he'll do something. And move the other units kind of along this route. And if he doesn't do anything, I'll be in range to hit that tiger on the next turn pretty easily. Fortunately, I have no line of sight on him right now. There we go. So he did go after my king. And look at all the damage he did, even with my guard up. Dang. Okay, here they all come. Alright, so the pillar... I hate the pillars. Annoying. Um... So the big problem is that Manticore Rider, first and foremost, that thing's got to go. I could try stunning it. Well, let's see what my odds are. 20% stun. That's not bad for a Manticore Rider, but my stun chances are a lot better on other things. Um, I do want to get him off my king, though. 
But as long as he's on defense, that's not going to happen. I can't really get the dragon over there to engage him directly without taking a hit from the tiger. And I would only hit him once if I did. And that would do a lot of damage to everybody, so I'm not going to do that. What's the smart thing to do here? I could take away at least one of his movement points with the dragon. Elf archers could get rid of the tiger pretty easily. I'll probably use them for that. Just to get it off of the dragon so he can do something else. Then the dragon could go uh, just wreck that war breed today. I don't know that he'd kill it though. Um, but I got more than enough firepower to, power to kill the war breed if I need to. So I think I am going to just take the chance here and try to stun that Manticore Rider. I think I could hit him from behind this post, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'd like to kill the panther, if I could, to get it out of the way. I'm kind of wishing I would have shot the war breed instead now. Let's see, if dragon kills the war breed, It would be up to the Flyers to kill the Panther, and they won't be able to do that unless I give them, unless I use my King to cast a spell. I do have to remember my King is still perfectly capable of fighting. Although I'd prefer, I think, to use him to try to stun this thing. Oh wait, if I turn this guy around, the Dragon could hit him twice and take away two of his action points. That would be kind of nice. And let's face it, I'm really going for the stun chance here, so the line of sight penalty isn't going to kill me. I did get the stun at only 20%. Well, that basically solves really all of my problems. So that frees the dragon up to come down here and cause some major problems to this breed, who is now panicked. So he's not an issue anymore. And my king can help deal with those panthers. Yeah. That stuns them, which takes them out of commission. Which means these guys can go out and fight with those tigers. Which I'll just let them do. They're more than a match for those tigers. My units got lucky in the process. And that leaves the flyer free to go over here. And I'm going to say get a charge attack on that Manticore Rider. Take away a nice bit of its health. Just in case I can't stun him again. That Warbreed just died because he tried to run away. They wrecked the tigers. Okay, this battle's pretty much over now. Goodbye, Panthers. And goodbye, Manticore Rider. I oh, may as well try to get him with my king first. Or get my king a nourishing meal, actually. Oh yeah, with their guard down, a lot easier to stun. And uh, who needs the XP? I'll give it to my dragon. He deserves it. A decently thought-provoking battle. I did get a Draconian Elder too, and a Halfling Brew Brother. Um, because I'm a sorcerer, both of these should have inflict stun. Yep, they have inflict stun on their cleavers. They're throwing electrical meat cleavers. That is just terrifying. All right, units can't really go anywhere. It's the white witch that's slowing me down. But these are just the kind of units that I needed for this person's army. So they'll be able to go help deal with the dragon. Although firebolts on this guy, or not dragon, the giant, but firebolts on this guy actually won't affect the giant. So I'll have to be relying on the Brew Brothers to do that. Ah, uh, well, I think that that army will be powerful enough. My king gets a uh, an upgrade. And I'm going to go with the general defense on this one. My king's defense is a little bit lacking. In fact, I'm going to put two levels into defense just to bump that up to a respectable 13 value instead of the 
11. A little more mediocre. Borders of this city just expanded. I need to clear this off, by the way. Kind of keep forgetting to do that. Master's Guild finally done in this city, which is getting closer and closer to producing some really, really awesome support units. Magic Academy and Ultra Bound Souls. I know I need both of those. Um, slaughter Pits, don't need yet, but might use that later. Firestorm Pillar, no. Um, there is one thing I can get to boost this a little bit more if I have the patience to do it, but I don't really think I do. If you build the... Um, Oh, what's it called? Like the, the mountain upgrade that lets the Draconians build their flyers. Um, those sorts of structures, when you build them in your cities, also gives Tier 1 and Tier 2 units an extra rank when you produce them. Um, it's not crucial. They'll get My units will get plenty of experience anyway. It is a nice thing to have, but it's a little too far off for me to take the time and resources to build it. Uh, so let's see here. I do need the temple to build some of the units that I want to make, so I'll, I'll start with the shrine and get that done. That'll get done in quickly in one turn. Uh, Erbion... I still haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this city. I could use it for siege, um, which is something I don't do a lot, but I probably should, because it's got the flow rock quarry there. Yeah, why not? Um... This would be a good structure to get if I'm going to go that route. Build a couple Master's Guilds here and there. Um, out here in this city, I was thinking about making pikemen here. I think I've already got the barracks. I must have built the barracks already, so maybe a war hall would be next to build the Draconian Charger. Peak of the Forefathers, that's the building I was thinking of earlier. Um, also could use a siege workshop here, though. The extra production would be nice. What's it at? 75? Yeah, let's get that first. Just max out production in pretty much all my cities. Merchandise there for now. Alright, so out here. Let's explore a little more and see what we can find. I'm going to fly probably all the way around Blue's land to kind of outline it a little bit. Um... He's still a little too beat up for me to want to take this thing on. But about the time he's healed, these units will be here. So I'm not in any huge rush. I'll just move them around to this side so they can join up. And then on the next turn, they can go help them clear all that. And then I will go underground and try to kill whatever is spawning those undead. At least now I've got an eye on the area. You guys are good for now. All right, so I'm going to treat these guys more as backup reinforcements for these armies, um, which I am going to still keep together for now. Yeah, these guys were with the dwarf, so I'm going to leave them behind. Or maybe it was the charger, the raptor. Well, the raptor will benefit from her spirit damage now, so that's fine if he stays with her. I'll leave an elder back with the dwarf army. I'm going to kind of move them up sort of carefully to try to be as efficient as I can with my movement points here. Um, she could use another raptor in the group. Well, I only have three to go around, so I'll keep them kind of balanced. Um, just another melee unit. How about that hellhound? That'll be a nice addition to her army. All right, and then he could use... Like a support. Now he's already got a support. He could use something like that chariot, I guess. There we go, because that's a melee unit. Alright, and then I'll let the raptor kind of lead these guys around for now until I have another hero to replace him with. Maybe put a flamer with each group. That'd be a decent balance. Alright, let's move them up, because the flamers will be able to reach wherever they need to. She can get as far as this tile here. He can get as far as that tile. And he can't quite make it to either one. So, in the interest of safety here, because those wetlands are getting in the way, I'm going to move him like this. 
And I do see some units out here. Ellen the Disruptor, a High Elf Dreadnought. Finest, or Felinus the Evasive. Not worried about it with an army like this. I've got more than enough firepower to deal with them. So I'll just add a Flamer to each of those armies and send the Hatchling and the Tiger back. Um, it's really almost probably suicide. You know what? It's more worth protecting that city that's actually got valuable stuff that I built in it. I'm going to send them back. And have them help focus on that city instead. Alright, and I can finish my road here. Which is a really weird built road. My civil engineers have no idea what they're doing, but it works. And maybe you have a watchtower somewhere in this area. I think that would be nice. Alright. Everybody else good for now? see what else we can find down here. Oh, there's uh, independent city borders. Um, sure. Okay, open borders. This is kind of a tough call. I've got enough evil points now that I don't... Well, you know what? I'm going to decline. I'm not going to take peace with them now. I'll probably declare war on them later, because I still would like to get pure evil... I could actually even declare war on them now. How close am I to being pure evil? I don't think anyone else has gotten that. I think it's at like minus 600 or something. Um, the thing is, I haven't quite decided whether I want to stay on the fairies' good side or not. Because some of their units are, are really nice. Those nightshade fairies especially are really cool. So I think I'm going to leave them alone for now and maybe just kind of annex them later. Actually, see what our options are. Now, I've already thrown away my chance to get it for free. Maybe I should have just taken peace, since I have plenty of evil points. I don't know. That's okay. We'll just roll with it. I'm going to leave them here, because they're going south, so it's more like just waiting on those other units to catch up. Um, and the hatchling... Oh, the hatchling can probably come along. Alright. I do get another dragon on this turn. Forgot about that. He's going to go with these armies. He's going to make a nice addition to the front line. Um, I will probably put him with the warlord's group. Yeah, the warlord's group is pretty stacked. I'll probably replace one of these guys in the theocrats army with that dragon. Let's uh, see where these guys go. Nope, he's already made his move, so they're they're going to stay there and try to defend that city. I hope he's got more units in there. I really want to take out some more. Ah, uh, I thought that might happen. Okay, well, bye. And so it was that Bob's Wisp died in the underground. I didn't really get a whole lot explored down there, now, did I? <laughs> I'll have to try to remember to send another Wisp down or something. First and foremost, though, I'm most interested in what's going on up here. So, let's uh, let's take let's take one of these flamers out since I have an overabundance of flamers. Just send him back. Yeah, like that. And then see how far I can move here. What have we got? Another three units there. Okay, so a nice big battle for this city, I think. I could get her there. I could get him here. And I can get them here. Which means... That I could launch that battle and get... I'm gonna have to fight all three stacks. Yeah, I can do this. This'll work. All right. Congratulations, you're the proud owner of your brand new dragon. Do I want to summon another wisp and just go underground, or 
Nah, I'm gonna keep summoning dragons. I might send one down there as a scout. This be a scout that can pretty much kill almost anything. Uh, any other small groups by itself. I don't know. They do have flying and, and some of the abilities. They actually would make really good scouts. The obsidian dragons in particular would make great scouts in the caves. Uh, because they have cave concealment, or not cave concealment, they have uh, night vision. And they're flying. I'll definitely want one underground at some point, in some context. Okay, um, I'm going to take care of some other things in this episode and not do that battle yet, because I'm starting to run low on time here, and that one could take a little while. So let me wrap up some of the other stuff that's going on here. Um, reconverge these units towards the city. I'll actually put the tiger in there for now. I'll leave the others within range to get there in one turn, but kind of out a little bit to where they can run to the front line and serve as backup if needed. My, for my next skill to research, Black Lightning's kind of a neat one. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it has a chance to inflict Spirit Breaking, a pretty high chance. So it can be kind of a tactical combat spell. Um, I'm going to stick with Sorcery for now. Let's get a few more casting points. After this level of Sorcery, I'll probably go back to trying to research other things. All right, this city's done. This will let me build Draconian Elders. The Sorcerer's Conflicts will let me build Apprentices, so I want both of those. And then uh, probably go straight for those. Should be good. Let's, uh, let's start with the Temple, I guess, since that also gives uh, extra mana income per turn. So that's kind of an immediate benefit. Uh, I want an Observatory out here. I kind of want Observatories everywhere. I really like all that extra research, so I'll get that now. Can't afford the Master's Guild in that city on this turn anyway. Let's go down here. Oh wow, she's got more borders in this area. That's a pretty big country. Oh, and I can see the other side of Santa's Empire. So this will help me get a good estimate of just how big they are. So this is all probably one city, and I'll bet you anything that's their capital. They wouldn't have a city that big if it wasn't their capital. Um, so that is where I am headed right after I take this and kill these units here. I'm just going to do an about face and go right back down. And I should be able to kill Santa because I got a feeling I'm going to take out like half of his army right here. He'll probably have something similar to this back in his city. Um, I do want to look inside. I see here that this guy was the one with four aprons, that dreadnought there. Um, he doesn't have a lot of units with him, just the ogre and one apprentice. So that's not particularly worrisome. I'm really hoping that they didn't get Inflict Stun yet. No, they still don't have that. Oh man, that's really bad for them. That is really bad for them. Really good for me though. Um, and let's see, that's a dwar Elf Dreadnought, so I want to check to see if sh she has Forge Aprons. She does not. So I don't have to worry about that on any other units, and this army doesn't even have a leader. This should be a pretty good battle for me. Alright, so now that uh, this... you group probably has those giants handled. Um, oh, he just took over that fairy city. Okay. <sighs> I need to decide what I'm going to do with Jizargo. I guess for the moment I could go clear this. Um, there is a nightshade fairy in there, so I wonder if maybe I should do this a bit carefully. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this the, the safe way. All right. Hi. I love the dragon because you can kind of just throw it forward and it'll probably be fine. And even if it does die, it'll come back because it's got resurgence. That one does anyway. They're going to go after the uh, softer, more vulnerable units, which is not surprising. Okay, so pretty easy decisions here. Stun Zephyrbird, kill Zephyrbird. You go over here and back off a little bit from that, that fairy out there. Kill that unit. They could go kind of mess that fairy up. But I think I'm going to leave that to my dragon. Okay, he can now go out and get a flank attack on the fairy. They're also weak to 
blight. I think they are anyway. Are they? Uh, blight weakness, 40%. Yeah, so that helps to... Yeah. Finisher. Easy battle, but uh, not one that I wanted to let the computer do for me. Okay. Let's park my units on the dungeon for the moment. I really need to think about this decision before I attack Jazargo. Um, this is something I'm going to want you guys' feedback on. Do you think it'd be a good idea for my king's army to go capture some of this guy's cities while he's at war with Roger Peacock? Maybe I should check in with Roger Peacock and see if he'll give me anything nice to go to war with Jazargo. That could be cool. Um, gonna leave them here for the moment and actually just save the game where it's currently at. This seems like a pretty decent stopping point. Got a couple big things coming up in the next episode. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on this whole idea of me attacking Jazargo. I don't want to put my king's army and give them more than they can handle. Um, but Santa seems to be kind of on the ropes here, and let's take a quick peek at what this battle might look like. Probable victory, and if it says probable victory, my odds are probably even better. Although I, he, he is going to have spells, but I've got some casting points too, so. All right, well, we will see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap it up for this episode. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in episode 11.